Minneapolis. All right, so as I said at the top of the show, uh, right now, uh, Trump is on stage, uh, I believe. Did I just say yet another thing that's not true? All right, we're waiting for him to come out. Never read the prompter. Um, and when he does, it's going to be right when the debate is starting down the road uh, in Miami. He's in Hialeah, Florida. And this is all by design. And it's a good move, I think. Why do I say I think? Because it's great to step on your competition, but does not going to the debate and then do a rally mean anything that could hurt him? News Nation's political editor, Chris Steierwald, is with us when he takes uh, the stage and starts to speak. I got people monitoring it. If he says something that matters to you, we'll dip in, all right? Now, Chris, any way to measure whether or not not doing the debates is a plus minus? Well, I mean, when you're as far ahead as Trump is, let's remember the basic rule about debates. If you are the incumbent, which Trump is basically running as the incumbent, he was twice the Republican nominee, he wants it to be a third time, uh, and he's ahead by, you know, 30 points uh, over his closest competitor in national polls. So you don't want to debate, right? If you're the incumbent, typically you don't want to, you don't want to debate. The question for Trump, though, is, is this. Um, there are divisions inside the Republican Party. Uh, there is uh, unsettled business uh, between the two warring factions of the Republican Party, factions that we saw play out, by the way, in the election of a House speaker, the, the removal uh, and then the uh, uh, defeat of subsequent candidates before House Republicans finally settled on. There is that work for the Republican Party to do. When Trump doesn't participate in that and does his own thing, uh, that it doesn't move that inventory. Second, and probably more important, is we saw results in a bunch of states yesterday, but including Pennsylvania, the biggest, most important swing state of them all, 19 electoral votes, uh, very close in 2016, very close in 2020. If the Republican brand is basically Donald Trump, right, if that's, if that's all there is, if it's the Donald Trump show and nothing, and nothing more, uh, that's not going to be good enough for down-ballot Republicans. That's not going to be acceptable when what you're trying to do is like what Glenn Youngkin was trying to do in Virginia. Have a little differentiation. Well, he's like that, but we're like this. That's a, that's a MAGA Republican. We do it a little differently here in Virginia. Uh, that's the kind of the differentiation you need, and, and Democrats will continue to take advantage of that. What did you see in these elections uh, that gives you a window into the what? you know, in terms of what culture issues or what specific uh, you think we're going to see uh, as an issue in the upcoming election based on what we saw here that resonated in different. And did you learn anything about where some of those magic counties, the handful of counties that wind up determining the presidential oh. may be? <laughs> it's almost time. It's almost magic county time. I, can, I cannot wait. Uh, but the when you look at particularly uh, Kentucky, it's its own thing. I love you, Kentucky. I'm a West Virginian. Uh, I like your weirdness. Kentucky goes against the grain. That's what they like to do. They've had switched governors, uh, switched parties for their governor four times uh, this century. They like it wild. I appreciate it. Um, but when we look at Virginia, when we look at Pennsylvania, we see where the voters are. We see what's going on. I learned two important things. Number one, we have to remember Elections like these are not about persuadable voters. Those folks stay home. So you saw, everybody saw, David Axelrod definitely saw the New York Times uh, Siena poll that came out over the weekend. Democrats have been really living in misery over this poll that shows Biden getting just stroked in every swing state, down 11 points in Nevada, every place but Wisconsin. So if that's true, right, so I'm, I'm reading that over here, and then I look at the results on Tuesday, and the two don't match up. And part of the reason they don't match up is persuadable voters, late deciders, people who don't have a strong affiliation to either party, they don't vote in elections like this. Pennsylvania election would get 40, probably got 40 percent of the number of votes that you'd get in a presidential year. So you're, you're scraping off, you're taking away the people who are the least engaged, right? These are the people who are only voting in presidential years. A lot of those folks are Trump voters, right? Mm. So in a, in a general quadrennial election, presidential, a lot of those folks are going to show up who wouldn't show up for this. But what we do get is a core sample of how fired up Democrats are and how much they are driven by abortion. And when you see the numbers in Ohio, when you see what the campaigns were run about in Pennsylvania and in Virginia, 
that Virginia, those Virginia races ended up with nearly 200 million daggone dollars being spent to move the move the goalposts just you know two feet basically uh, in the Commonwealth of Virginia. What were most of the ads about? What was most of the discussion about? It was mostly about abortion. And right. we now have continuing evidence that this is a powerful issue to unite Democrats. Now Hey, thank you for watching. Please go to NewsNationNow.com, NewsNationNow.com, and you can find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button down below. Then you will get more of NewsNation's fact-driven coverage.